Hey, it's Fei Wu, your host for the Fei's World podcast. You're listening to a mini episode on how to produce your first small budget docu series. These learnings are captured and distilled from our very own docu series production journey for Fei's World. You don't need a fancy degree or a big budget. Our minis are built in with templates and examples you can use right away. Everything in plain English and no industry jargons. New minis are released every two weeks in between our interview episodes. Subscribe to the podcast to stay in touch. Hi there! Welcome back to another mini episode on docu series filmmaking. And this week, we're going to discuss all about schedule or scheduling. Here's the thing: your availability matters. If you work full time, part time, or if you're like me who works as a freelancer, sometimes it can be difficult to put a chunk of time and focus on your own project. So here's my recommendation: This is how I negotiate a time off. I reached out to several of my clients right away as soon as I decided to focus on this project、uh, during the time frame of September. I knew this by June, and I was able to put in my notice for that time off right away. And what you want to do is continue to check in with your employer, with your clients,、uh, not just two to three months before, but also one month before. And for me, I scheduled a one-on-one. With the person in charge, one week before I took off, with all the details and a very complete and detailed transition plan. The second thing here is that it's not just you. Obviously, you have to consider the availability of your core team. So here's what I mean by core team: the people who you need on a regular basis during production. At the very least, we may be referring to your producer and your director. So as mentioned earlier, producer is someone who. Oversees everything for you in addition to you. This person manages a schedule overall, the budget overall, as well as the daily details. Who needs to be where, when? And the director is someone who drives forward the artistic vision for your docu series. So it's really important that these people stay close to you. They travel with you. So for Phase World, we had to travel to several cities,、uh, which made traveling and budgeting certainly a lot more complex. But if you are hiring and working with people locally, and if you plan to stay locally for your docu series, trust me, it will make things a lot easier. Depending on what you're trying to do, keep in mind that there are resources you can hire per location. People such as the production assistant or a sound engineer. So those people you can hire per location. It's Consider less of a part of a core team. The third thing to think about is that while it may be ideal for you to start and stop during production and take a break and regroup with your team, that certainly is an ideal plan. That was also our original plan, which was to shoot one to two weeks every month between September and、uh, December of 2018. But that quickly fell through because we realized the budget that we had simply couldn't support it. We went from planning upon one hundred fifty thousand dollars down to anywhere between fifty to sixty thousand dollars. It was a blessing in disguise, as it taught us how to work within a very small budget. As Seth Godin would say, "Embrace the constraints," and we ended up with a two and a half week, roughly seventeen days on the road between September fifth and September twenty first, completely packed schedule with very little breaks built in in between. Because we're focusing on small budget docu series and video production budget, it makes sense for us to recommend an approach that isn't going to be easy or necessarily most ideal, but something that will significantly cut down on your budget and therefore make your project possible. Let's take a look at a real example. That's us, Phase World docu series. I left Boston, Massachusetts, on my own on September fifth. And I flew to Vegas to meet up with my producer and director Dan and Ed. In this case, we had a few days in Vegas, which was very ideal. We had the chance to regroup as a team, finalize details, identify any enhancements we might apply to the existing story arc and the schedule. We also recorded a voice intro for the documentary. 
Second stop, we went from Vegas to LA. September 10th was a travel day, and we completed two interviews on the day of September 11th. Then we flew from LA to New York on the day of September 12th. That day was a travel day, as you guys can imagine. Due to the time difference, flying from LA to New York City, we lost three hours, and、um, we were in the air for six. That day, we got up at literally three in the morning. In between September 13th and September 17th, we interviewed a lot of people, including Basila Bukoko, Sarah Cooper, Barry Alexander, Cosmo Bolno, Dory Clark, and Seth Godin. Short period of time. And we interviewed someone every single day. And the daily schedule that's worth mentioning is that we have to be out of the house, everybody in the car, by around 8 a.m. That is with booking Airbnbs relatively close to all the subjects that we're going to interview. We get to their house and get started around nine, and we don't need our guests to be ready to go by nine o'clock. Instead, our interviews typically start at 10:30 or 11 local time. And that means you you want to plan for at least a couple of hours to make sure you have the production set up, lighting looks right, and you get to do a, maybe a little pre-interview for ten to fifteen minutes. Then after the shoot, I had a few more days left in New York. Between September eighteenth and the twenty-first, we had a chance to regroup as a team, and I got to talk to my editor Herman via Skype, and even put together a very rough cut of our first episode. I will include links in the blog, so visit us at faceworld.com/blog/103. This is mini episode 103. If the schedule sounds super brutal to you, well, it is not at all unusual for other filmmakers. In fact, our interview production typically started at 8:30 and usually ended around, you know, 12:30, 1 o'clock at the latest. However, I'm going to include some of the stories. From other interviews I conducted with these lovely filmmakers, I know Courtney Marsh, Ken Ang, they've been doing this for well over a decade and poured their heart and soul into this. And what I'm describing isn't unusual at all. But I do recommend that you consider the schedule I'm putting forward. Okay, so this schedule that I described, sure, almost didn't work for us. If your docu series is dependent on other talents, guests, for example, most likely, they need to be available on the days that you are. It can get complicated pretty fast. For us, it was a dice roll. Our guests were very friendly, accommodating, but there are always things outside of our control. What if an emergency comes up for anyone, yourself, your team members, or your guests? Production will then have to be postponed. As for us, we had. Very little buffer built in. If things went wrong, we might not be able to make it up at a later time. Docu series filmmaking is quite brutal in that sense. Financial limitations and other dependencies aside, imagine for a second, for a moment, the producers and the crew for like the Discovery Channel or the BBC's Nature Program. They've got one chance at that millisecond to get things right. So the good news is that you most likely have. A little bit of a buffer can make up the stories that you've missed and find a way to work around it. If you don't remember anything from this episode, here's the takeaway: Don't sweat the little things. Roll with the punches. You'll be surprised that the imperfections are part of docu series and video production process. They add the twists and the flavors to your film like no other. Every human is vulnerable. Let your docu series speak the truth and celebrate the imperfections that are an integral part of our lives. Now you're done with the production. What do you do? That is amazing. All the episodes, the stories, the videos are in the can. Make sure that your files are backed up. We'll be discussing file management, proper backup plans in a future episode. Dropbox, Google Drive, Backblaze, all the usual stuff, and we'll also talk about how we structure these files. Okay, let's talk about post production for a second. It's no joke. That is where the magic happens. Not just editing, but color grading, music composition, animation, and graphics are so desired. What happened during this time? Communication is key. For me, I sat down with my team, Dan and Ed, and figure out and reevaluated our goals for the end product. 
how many episodes we wanted to have, how we're going to weave together the stories that maybe almost felt like disjointed when we're looking at all and everything all together. Things change during production. It's never 100% of what you've originally planned. Sometimes you don't even come close to it. Now imagine how that will impact the editor. So my editor, Herman, and I had a conversation for a solid hour to figure out the story arc for each. The duration of each episode will also impact the editing timeline, of course. For our episodes, we decided roughly about 12 to 14 minutes each. We estimated about one week of editing per episode to start. The velocity might increase in general or decrease depending on the actual episode because the editing complexity is a variable. Roughly, we're looking at two months for editing without rushing the output. And we, Phase World, have until end of this year, 2018, to put together all the episodes we'll love. In parallel with post-production, I've started the research and planning process for our marketing piece. This is an effort not to be overlooked and which we'll cover in great details in a future mini episode for docuseries filmmaking as well. So overall, here's a recap for how we manage our schedule. Our pre-production and workshop started in June. Sure, there were some conversations a little before that, but I consider that we hit the ground running at the end of June 2018. Our production took place in Vegas, LA, and New York, and that roughly took us over the course of 17 days, including travel days. And our post-production schedule started at the end of October, and that will go on through end of the year. So there you have it. We're not working every second of the day, and people have different responsibilities. They will come in and out. So I hope you enjoy this more storified episode and to give you an idea of our own journey. And if you want to learn more with these details and you want to see a rough cut of the Face World docuseries, just a single episode, and also some of the other related stories, interviews with these filmmakers I've had the pleasure to speak with, please visit faceworld.com forward slash blog forward slash 103. Thank you so much for listening and for your interest in this mini series. Please help tell one more person about it. And it really encourages me to do more of this. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in two weeks.